All right, this is a quick walkthrough of Traction 6 step clips. So to create a step clip, which is a great way to use an inline step sequencer for programming beats or synth lines or anything else that you'd like, bass lines. Well, to get started, you drag the clip object into a track and drop it. And then when you see this list, select Insert New Step Clip. Now in Traction 6, they're called Step Clip. It used to be called Step Sequencer Clip, which is kind of a mouthful back in, in Traction 5. But for Traction 6, they're now called Step Clips. And also the defaults change a little bit. We now have the standard 16-step sequencer that drops in. And also the channels, this is a channel here which plays individual MIDI notes have been pre-named to general MIDI drum notes. And you can start programming really quickly by just turning on and off notes in these by just clicking in this area. Also notice there's this new VG. This is the velocity gate view. If you click up here, then down here, when you click on a note, you can just drag to adjust the velocity, which is super convenient. You can even drag in a swiping style. So I'm going to program hi-hats by just swiping over this row. I guess I grabbed some opens here. And then if you click on the channel or any of the notes, then that channel selected and you can draw to kind of contour and shape these. Now this isn't going to do anything unless we put some sort of instrument out here. Traction 5 has a new search feature. So if you go to the browser, click on the search tab. Under here you can see you can filter by loops, presets, or plugins. Plugins would be effects or instruments. So I'm just going to search for free drum plugin, Imdrummer Free. So I'll drag Imdrummer over to the mixer section so I've got a virtual instrument to work with. Now if you happen to be using the Melda Productions Imdrummer, either the free or the regular version, you need to switch to the drum pad mode by clicking here. And now we've got drums, and this is the free version, but you've got a few different drum sets to play with, but we'll just leave that right now and play back. All right, so we've got a basic beat started. If we want to fill this out and actually create something a little bit more realistic, then we'll just turn on a couple more notes. So we'll go in here and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'll drag the cursor over here and just push up to zoom out a little bit. As you loop, as you pull this out, you'll see that your pattern repeats, but I don't really want it to do that right now. I also have the in marker and the out marker set over just this clip. If yours isn't, then the keyboard shortcut A will just set them over whatever is selected. So I've got that selected. I'm going to program one more note here and then Probably a good idea to put in a snare hit or two. So I'll put a snare hit here and maybe, I don't know, over here. And that's kind of how the programming goes when you're just getting started. If we want to add in a hi-hat at some point here, maybe I'll put hi-hats in this spot here and just replace them. Then on these channels here, I can reduce these. These are open hi-hats. All right, so what if you wanted to rename one of the channels? Click on the channel, and down here where it says bass drum, I'm gonna change that to kick. So that's how I rename a channel. If you click on the top of the clip, of the step clip, then you'll get some step clip properties. Here's a new feature. You can render this to a MIDI clip. So basically you click on the header and then click render to MIDI clip and now that whole thing becomes MIDI. There's our, our MIDI notes. So you can either use it there or you could drag it to another track and it makes it just a convenient way to get into the MIDI domain if you want to get out of the step clip domain. Now let's take a look at the parts of the step clip. 
These are channels over here, which we discussed. This is the entire clip. You can manipulate it like most clips and tracks, and you can duplicate it or copy it or delete it by selecting it here. Its properties show down here when you select it. But if you click the bottom, then you get the properties for the section. So a section is kind of like a song section or just part of a clip. I'm going to zoom out slightly here to where now I've got two bars showing. If I wanted to create another section, I can clip, click here and insert a duplicate section, which would put a new section before it, or append a duplicate section, which puts a new section at the end. Once you've done that, we now have two sections to work with. I'll click up here, use A to set the marker over the two sections, so that I can have a couple of bars. But they're both playing the same thing because they're set to the same pattern. So if we want a new pattern on this one, we can either click here and copy to a new pattern, or we can do new pattern entirely, which will create a blank pattern. But if you want to make a variation on that, then do new pattern, copy new pattern. So now you'll see this is incremented to two. So that's pattern two. A pattern works like a layer. You can set any section to whichever patterns are available for the clip. So now I've got it set to two. So you could program up a bunch of patterns and then basically organize them to play in any order that you want. Pretty typical sec step sequencer stuff. So I'm going to mix it up here a little bit with the, the kick and the snare to create a little variation on this. And if you wanted it to go in a different order, you could put pattern two first and then pattern one. Now, an interesting thing about the way this works, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, is as you roll it out, it will be repeating the last section. So it only repeats the last sections you roll it out. It's designed to work that way. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's how that works. So with a section selected, you have some options to do things like clearing all the notes. I'll undo that. New pattern, copy to new pattern, repeat it here. You can also randomize the notes to kind of take your chances. Randomize notes also appears on the menu that flies out when you select the footer. And you can see that's right here, randomize all notes. You can also randomize a channel. So if you wanted to try a random hi-hat part, click on the channel, and then down here you have randomized channel, and now you'll get. And you could get some really interesting parts that way. You can also shift the notes, so that shifts the notes one step to the right, that shifts them one step to the left, so you can try out some different ideas. Now I want to talk a little bit more about the velocity gate section because there's a couple really interesting tricks here. One I already showed you is that once you have your part in, you can contour the velocities this way. Well, it also works like a gate. If you're doing a synth part or if you want to get a really choppy sound, you can grab the edge here, right, right here, and actually adjust the MIDI note length. So if you want to get a very glitchy kind of a sound, then you can shorten up these note lengths by grabbing the edge. And you can do that programming right here. These can be set by clicking or by dragging. So if you're over here and you're setting a velocity, you can click within here, or you can just grab the top of it and drag up and down. You can also just paint in the notes and the velocities together. If you use the Command keyboard modifier on Mac or Control on PC, if I hold that down, and then I drag in this velocity area, I can just start painting in the notes. This is really cool if you put in a high step rate or a lot of steps and you want a trigger of a snare fill, you know, like a very machine gun kind of snare fill. We have a lot of steps. You can just paint them right in. 
and also scale them up at the same time, just like this. And that's by adding the keyboard modifier command if you're on a Mac or control if you're on a PC. So the parts of a step clip, just to review, is the step clip itself. You select it by selecting here, clicking on the header. These are channels along the side. You can rename them. You can also add or remove them. So for example, if I'm not going to use any ride symbol in this, I can click on this channel and delete the channel. So I can also rename them. I can add channels back in if I wanted to add something that's not an acoustic snare. I can just click right here and then do insert new channel and a new channel will appear right here. Once you've selected the new channel, you assign it to a note by dragging this arrow. So if I want to assign it to this sound right here, just drag this arrow, point it at that sound, and now that new track will play that sound. It gives you a really quick way to program this up. Now, if you want to save this as a preset and come back and use this at any point in the future, then you can do Create Preset, Include Patterns. I always use Include Patterns. And then save it as a, I'm going to just call this the Step Clip Demo. And just hit OK. And now this is available in the either in the search here, if you search including presets, and then type in step clip. Or you can filter by step clip right here, step clips rather, and you'll find demo. This is the one we just did. Or you can also do the same thing under the presets menu, step clips. That just filters a little more. Here's the new one that we just did. Now, if you want to create a template that's different from the from dragging the object in, then you can just take your setup the way you like it and clear the pattern. So you can do that by going down here, clear all notes. So now we have a blank. We have the channel set up. And then click on the step clip to select it, to create preset include patterns, even though the top one there is blank. And then down here in the tags, you could add a word like template so you can e easily find your, give it a descriptive name like 16 step drums. So if you want your channels named differently, or if you want them in the reverse order, some people like to see the kick at the bottom and then going up, just set one up that way and then save it as a template then you can get quick access to it over here by just clicking on template like this or template plus step clip and you'll have your own customized ones you can easily drag in so that is a rundown of a lot of the changes to step clips and the entire features evolved quite a bit since it came out originally in traction 5 so i hope you have fun with this thanks for watching